Mind Magic explores the concept of manifestation, emphasizing the mind's power to create change. James R. Doty, a neuroscientist, explains that manifestation involves setting intentions that embed into the subconscious, activating brain networks that are focused on goals. He outlines six steps, grounded in neuroscience, to help us harness our inner power and manifest our desires. Real magic. The universe doesn't care about you, and that's good news. It's not because you're unworthy or cursed, it's because the universe has no capacity to care. Many people hope for external solutions to their problems like finding a guardian angel. There's no proof of such forces, but there is evidence of the mind's power to create change, known as manifestation. Manifestation is an inner intention that guides a person's life, reducing the impact of the external environment. The first step is to stop believing in external sources for solving problems and recognize the power of the mind. Manifestation is about believing in possibilities. Trauma can make it hard to believe in change, but the brain's neuroplasticity allows it to adapt and create new pathways through intention and practice. Neuroplasticity is the ability to form new circuits and prune away old ones that no longer serve us. Manifesting involves embedding desired thoughts and images into the subconscious. Visualization helps the brain tag goals as important, making them more likely to be achieved. While not all goals will manifest, using these techniques increases the chances of positive change. Manifestation is a practice of well-being and optimism that leads to a more meaningful life. When he was young, James R. Doty randomly met a woman named Ruth at her son's magic shop. Ruth taught him the concept of manifestation. She was a kind woman who offered to teach him about real magic. Ruth's teachings helped Doty achieve his goals, blending practical advice with the power of the brain and heart. Manifesting is about well-being and connection, not just wealth. Manifesting is accessible to anyone, promoting healing and life changes through focused intention, a journey of loss and rediscovery. In 2000, the dot-com bubble burst. One morning, Doty was worth $78 million, he owned a villa, a seven, 500-square-foot mansion, and several luxury cars. He had made a down payment on a six, 500-acre island in New Zealand. Within six weeks, his entire net worth vanished. He had borrowed $15 million using his stock in a medical technology company as collateral, which became worthless. His banker confirmed he was broke and in debt. Doty had to sell his villa, cancel the island purchase, sell most of his cars, and put his mansion on the market. Returning to his empty house, he saw the neglected garden and the absence of family photos. He had separated from his wife. She left, taking the pictures, and his daughter was away at college. The house felt abandoned and ostentatious. Doty recalled the shame of being kicked out of his home and his early poverty. Having put in a lot of effort to create a secure existence, he suddenly felt like a failure. He discovered his most treasured childhood items, including a journal containing his wishes, in a cigar box hidden in a cupboard. He realized that, despite his wealth, he had not truly possessed more than what fit in that box. His negative thinking had shaped his life. Doty had all the signs of success, luxury cars, a mansion, and a gold Rolex. Still, he didn't feel satisfied. His mind had done as he had instructed, bringing him financial success, but he had abandoned the routines that had previously given him comfort and clarity. He gradually strayed from Ruth's teachings. He became financially and personally bankrupt as a result of this carelessness, and he also lost contact with his heartfelt habit. Doty realized that his pursuit of material success was driven by a desire to silence his inner critic. He had forgotten the importance of Ruth's lessons and faced the consequences alone. His shame and lack of self-worth were the real issues, not poverty. He had misdiagnosed his problem and pursued material achievements, which only provided temporary relief. Reflecting on his life, Doty saw that he had focused on future successes without being present. He had created a mansion but lacked the warmth and connection of a home. He had manifested his dreams but forgotten to include meaningful relationships. Doty faced the reality of his situation, dealing with the problems before starting anew. He calmed himself, separated his consciousness from negative emotions, and took responsibility for his life. People often desire material things without considering their complexities. Doty needed to understand what he had manifested and assess its value. 
He reflected on his life choices, reclaiming the inner power to shape his life. The six steps to manifesting intentions are reclaiming your power to focus your mind, clarifying what you truly want, removing the obstacles in your mind, embedding the intention in your subconscious, pursuing your goal passionately, and being open to magic. The Neuroscience of Manifestation Neurons form teams to handle data interpretation, moral reasoning, and memory. These neurons create large-scale brain networks, which are crucial for cognition. Disruptions in these networks can lead to disorders such as depression and ADHD. Manifesting uses four main brain circuits. The Default Mode Network DMN, Central Executive Network SEN, Salience Network SN, and Attention Network AN. These networks, along with the vagus nerve, help focus attention and embed intentions in the subconscious. Anula's story illustrates the impact of chronic stress. She grew up in Sri Lanka during a civil war, and her family moved to the S. Her father had been a microbiologist but could not find a good job, and her mother had to work in child care to make ends meet. It was difficult to get good health care when her mother got breast cancer. The family was counting on Anula to achieve the American dream. Her stress ballooned and she was often ill during college. She dreamed of becoming a doctor, but her anxiety hindered her performance. After college, she took a job as an associate data manager at a pharmaceutical company. Seeking help with her anxiety, she found Dodie's first book and emailed him. He also had been told he wasn't good enough for med school, and they began talking by phone. He helped her see that manifestation could be used in everyday life, and that meditation could help her focus on her goals. She reconnected with her Buddhist background and quickly began practicing meditation and relaxation techniques. The human nervous system includes the sympathetic nervous system SNS for fight or flight responses and the parasympathetic nervous system PNS for rest and digest. Chronic stress keeps the SNS activated, harming health, which is what happened to Anula. Neurotransmitters including dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin and endorphins regulate happiness and well-being. These chemicals are essential for positive emotions and achieving goals. Anula found peace and clarity. She wrote letters to congratulate herself as if she had already fulfilled a desired achievement, starting with a promotion to full data manager. She carried the letter, reread it often, and visualized the emotions of achieving her goal. This practice boosted her confidence, reduced her insecurity, and made her more decisive at work. Her colleagues and supervisors noticed her newfound confidence, and she got her promotion. Despite this progress, fear still haunted her. She realized she needed to align her goals with a larger purpose. Reflecting on her potential impact as a doctor helped her transform fear into compassion. She reconnected with the practice of metta, or loving kindness, from her childhood in Sri Lanka, offering compassion to herself, her loved ones, and future patients. This practice filled her with warmth and helped her transcend a self-centered approach. Anula increased her focus and energy. Her practice scores on the medical college admission test improved. She kept writing herself congratulatory letters, combining visualization and relaxation with compassion. When she took the test for real, she scored well. Holding her acceptance letter to medical school felt familiar, as she had visualized it many times. Anula graduated from med school and continues to practice calming her mind and opening her heart. Activating the PNS. The DMN is active during inward-focused activities like daydreaming and self-reflection. It helps us narrate our life story and empathize with others. However, it can also contribute to negative self-talk. The SN determines what is important among the overwhelming stimuli we encounter. Dysfunction in the SN can lead to anxiety and depression. The in focuses our attention, while the Sen helps with decision-making and problem-solving. Effective collaboration among these networks is crucial for manifesting goals. The PNS facilitates well-being, learning, and creativity, making manifesting possible. Switching from a fight-or-flight response to a rest-and-digest response involves practices that activate the PNS. Close your eyes or softly direct your gaze a few feet in front of you. Turn your attention inward. Notice where your body contacts the surface holding you. Feel gravity rooting you to the earth and the ground pressing upward into your feet. Acknowledge any tension in your body. Take three deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Sigh loudly if you like. Repeat until this breathing feels natural. Notice how you are sitting or lying and imagine looking at yourself. 
Start a scan of your body by focusing on your toes, inviting them to relax. Move to your feet, relaxing the small muscles. Imagine the muscles melting away as you breathe. If your mind wanders, gently bring your focus back to your toes and feet. Once your toes and feet are relaxed, move to your calves and thighs. Invite the larger muscles to relax. Continue with your abdomen, chest, spine, back, shoulders, neck, face, and scalp. Send your breath to any areas of tension, inviting them to loosen. Notice the calmness spreading through your body and mind. You may feel sleepy or struggle to connect with calmness. Be patient and kind to yourself. Focus on your heart, relaxing it as you breathe. Notice your heartbeat slowing. Imagine complete relaxation. Feel warmth, stillness, or contentment. Install these feelings in your nervous system. Slowly open your eyes and rest in this state of Practice this daily, even for five minutes at a time, increasing the time as you become more comfortable. Reclaiming inner power. The two-wheeler hoverboard weighed 25 pounds. Amory held it over his head, ready to swing it at Sean's face. It was a hot August day in San Jose, California, at the Calabazas Park pump track. Riders swished by, performing tricks. Amory, 13, and Sean, 15, were part of a summer program for neurodivergent students called F Plus Fun Positive, combining outdoor activities with games and meditation. Dr. Lois Prislovsky, a psychologist, and Colin Maslin, a former bike mechanic and social worker, led the program. They met during compassion training at Stanford Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education, which Doty founded. They bonded over biking and a desire to help underserved youth. Normally, these students would spend the summer on dull worksheets. Many were on the autism spectrum, bullied, bullies, or nonverbal. Social interaction was painful for them. Lois and Colin founded F Plus Productions to teach self-regulation, compassion, and meditation. ADHD brains crave novelty, so traditional meditation wasn't suitable. Lois recorded personalized meditations, combining compassion meditation with hypnotherapy. After physical activities, students practiced these meditations in hammocks, trees, and swings. They learned to relax, focus, and direct their intentions. Amory had endured a lot of teasing about his name, and Sean kept calling him by a nickname he hated. He was ready to fight, but he remembered his training. Instead of attacking, he laughed and everyone joined in. Then Amory simply asked Sean to stop it. Over six weeks, Amory's depression and anxiety decreased, and his compassion increased. He learned to direct his attention and reclaim his inner power, known as self-agency. A sense of self-agency is the feeling of being in control of our actions and their outcomes. The brain assesses whether our actions cause the intended results and uses this data to determine our sense of agency. However, our conscious mind isn't aware of most subconscious processes so it relies on interpreting these actions to tell us if we have control. When we believe we can influence our circumstances, we feel empowered. When we don't, we feel disheartened. For example, patients with anisognosia, a condition where they are unaware of their impairments, might believe they can move paralyzed limbs. Their brains misinterpret intentions and predictions of actions, giving them a false sense of agency. This illustrates that our sense of agency is a subjective experience shaped by our thoughts. Self-efficacy, the belief in our ability to achieve goals, influences our behavior more than actual ability. Cognitive control is key for manifesting intentions. By focusing attention and embedding intentions into the subconscious, we optimize our ability to manifest. Inner power is like potential energy, a resource that is contained until it is released. It is often obscured by mental habits and negative conditioning. By recognizing and detaching from these habits, we can access our inner power. Manifesting requires clear, focused thinking, which is hindered by stress and negative emotions. By stepping back and observing our thoughts, we can gain control over our responses and influence our reality. This process involves updating our mental software to produce a more desirable reality. Clarifying what you want. In 1980, before Nanoa Thompson's historic 2, 200-mile journey from Hawaii to Tahiti, his teacher, Mao Piailug, asked him to observe the stars, seabirds, and clouds. Thompson aimed to prove ancient Polynesians navigated purposefully using nature, rather than passively drifting on currents. Mao, one of the last ancient navigators, asked Thompson if he could see Tahiti. Thompson replied that he could see it in his mind. 
Mao emphasized holding on to that vision to avoid getting lost. This lesson taught Thompson to trust his inner compass. Manifesting starts with connecting to our inner vision, which guides us through life's challenges. True manifesting isn't about material wealth, but deeper fulfillment. Reflecting on past moments of true success helps set our inner compass. Psychologist Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs shows that once basic needs are met, we can focus on higher purposes. Manifesting can help at any stage from basic needs to self-actualization. It's important to discern true desires from societal or superficial ones. Reflecting on positive memories or imagining fulfilling experiences helps us align with our inner compass. Positive emotions from these reflections guide the subconscious to seek similar real-life experiences. Christine Wamsler, a professor at Lund University in Sweden, used visualization to secure funding for her sustainable development work. By visualizing success and feeling positive emotions, she aligned her inner compass with her goals, leading to real-world achievements. Aligning intentions with heartfelt desires and evoking positive emotions strengthens the role of the subconscious in achieving goals. Positive emotions activate the brain's reward systems, aligning our inner compass with our intentions. They help us break free from old patterns. Associating intentions with strong positive emotions in the present signals their importance to the subconscious. Vivid visualization enhances emotional intensity by capturing attention and alerting the brain to prioritize these intentions. The brain uses value tagging to classify information, determining its importance based on emotional content related to belonging, connections, life meaning, and survival. Strong positive emotions indicate that an intention is meaningful and should be cultivated. Visualization should include detailed physical circumstances and the associated positive emotions such as joy and contentment. Positive emotions change the brain's focus, prioritizing future experiences that evoke similar feelings. The source of these emotions is less important than recognizing and savoring them. This process teaches the brain to form new neural circuits, making positive experiences more salient and guiding intentions. Engaging the PNS enhances imagination allowing the brain to integrate past experiences into a holistic picture. This fosters creativity by recombining memories, present experiences, and imagined possibilities. The SNS, focused on past and potential dangers, hinders positive imagination, limiting the ability to envision and achieve a better life. To break free from old patterns, we must create vivid, emotionally heightened inner experiences. Positive emotions from imagined experiences guide actions to create these experiences in reality. When visualization is practiced repeatedly, it influences outcomes by giving subconscious attention to desired results, a technique used by elite athletes. Mental rehearsal and visualization remind the mind of future positive outcomes, removing mental obstacles. When Doty was 12, weekly trips to the library with his brother were a cherished ritual. They walked along railroad tracks for a mile, enjoyed the air conditioning in the library, and checked out 10 books each. Dodie's brother explored his artistic talent and identity as a gay teen, while Dodie discovered spirituality books. Intrigued by the idea of transcendence, Dodie experimented with out-of-body experiences. One night, he felt his awareness rise out of his body, offering a sense of freedom and independence. Without guidance, these journeys became terrifying often leaving him paralyzed with fear. He later understood these experiences as lessons in working with the amygdala, the brain's emotion regulator. Over time, he realized that the evil spirits he encountered were manifestations of his own inner fears. Accepting these fears allowed him to integrate them and not let them control his life. Understanding the amygdala's role in manifesting is crucial. It filters stimuli and prioritizes survival, often amplifying fear. To manifest successfully, we must direct attention away from fear and towards intention. The inner critic often hinders this process. Negative self-talk creates a mental prison. Overcoming this requires shifting focus from fear to positive self-belief. The inner critic is not just discouraging but also distracting. It drains energy and impedes focus on intentions. It diverts inner resources away from positive goals feeding off the fight, flight, or freeze system, and keeps hold on the brain's salience network, which decides what deserves attention. This distraction leads to failure, creating a vicious cycle of self-torture. 
At birth, humans are open and unconditioned. Negative experiences soon stick to the mind like post-it notes, forming beliefs like, I am not good enough. These thoughts, arising from specific experiences, become deeply rooted due to the brain's exaggerated attention to negative stimuli. These beliefs shape our sense of self and become habitual patterns. Negative thoughts accumulate, becoming perceived truths. They define self-worth and worldviews, creating a mental prison. These beliefs, which are internalized and acted upon repeatedly, dictate behavior subconsciously. The negative thoughts cover the radiant, loving self within. They block the inner compass that guides us toward our true needs. When riddled with negativity, the true self and its light are obscured. Negative beliefs from childhood persist into adulthood, shaping behavior subconsciously. Early experiences of comfort, or the lack of it, influence adult interactions. Traumatic experiences can trigger primal, irrational actions. To manifest intentions, the primitive nervous system must feel safe enough to take healthy risks. Negative beliefs imprinted during early development must be addressed on a deep biological level. The mammalian caregiving system signals safety and supports the manifestation process. Self-compassion can rewire the brain through neuroplasticity, replacing negative beliefs with positive ones. It heals chronic feelings of unsafety and transforms them into wisdom and compassion. Connecting with others and sharing struggles aids in pursuing goals with resilience. Reflect on feeling safe by imagining a comforting place or person. Embrace feelings of love, happiness, and fulfillment. Appreciate your humanity and acknowledge your worth. Write about your positive feelings and abilities, noting how they affect others. Breathe deeply, relax, and understand that negative self-talk limits you. Reframe your mindset to release self-imposed limitations. Feel relaxed and loved, empowering yourself to manifest desires by silencing the inner critic and visualizing dreams. Embedding intentions in the subconscious. Jim Carrey's $10 million check is a famous example of manifesting. Carrey's childhood was tough. His mother Kathleen had severe depression, rheumatoid arthritis, and colitis. She became addicted to pain medication and emotionally abandoned her children. Carrie's father Percy was a talented jazz musician who sold his saxophone to pay her hospital bills. Percy was joyful and funny, inspiring his son. Percy could have been a great comedian, but chose a stable job as an accountant. When Carrie was 12, Percy lost his job and the family struggled. They lived in a camper and worked as janitors. Carrie's grades suffered and he dropped out of high school at 16. He felt life was unfair. Carrie had been trying to lighten the family's burdens with comedy since he was in third grade. Percy took him to perform at a comedy club when he was 15, setting him on his career path. He believed in magic and visualized success. He wrote himself a $10 million check for acting services rendered and kept it in his wallet. In a span of three years, he starred in Ace Ventura, The Mask and Dumb and Dumber, earning $10 million. Carrie's process involved embedding his intention in his subconscious. The brain conserves energy and resists new experiences. Visualization practices teach the brain to recognize desires, making them familiar and easier to achieve. The subconscious scans for opportunities to manifest intentions. Positive emotions and repetition help embed goals in the subconscious, leading to synchronicity and achieving desires. Our conscious attention is limited, this means most of our decisions are made subconsciously, often based on unexamined habits or responses to threats. To align our actions with our true desires, we must consciously create healthier habits of attention. The more we focus on a particular intention, the more our subconscious prioritizes it. By repeatedly focusing on a desired outcome and visualizing it with our senses, we train our subconscious to work towards it. The SNS often fills our subconscious with fears and insecurities due to its evolutionary role in survival. To harness the power of our subconscious, we must recognize and sublimate these survival-driven tendencies. We can consciously influence the subconscious by practicing repetitive visualization techniques. This strengthens the PNS and diminishes the SNS influence. Flow states, hypnosis, and the placebo effect all demonstrate the power of focused attention and positive emotions in shaping our subconscious. Flow states occur when we are fully engaged in a task, reducing self-referential thinking and increasing focus. Hypnosis creates a state of complete absorption, 
allowing the subconscious to be more receptive to suggestions. The placebo effect shows how belief in healing can lead to actual physical changes. Rituals help align our conscious and subconscious minds. For example, Lynn Twist, founder of the Soul of Money Institute and co-founder of the Pachamama Alliance, uses a candle lighting ritual to focus her intentions before meeting potential donors. Repeatedly visualizing our goals and associating them with positive emotions can help embed these intentions in our subconscious, making them more likely to manifest. Visualization is very powerful when practiced regularly and with an open heart. Sit down, relax with your eyes closed and focus on your goal. Redirect your wandering thoughts. Breathe deeply, relax your muscles and feel calm, safe and focused on manifesting your goal. Visualize your intention and feel satisfaction. Breathe slowly, feeling calm and connected to possibilities. Practice this daily for better results. Pursuing a goal passionately. The intertropical convergence zone is a challenging area for sailors due to unpredictable winds and currents near the thermal equator. Nainoa Thompson feared navigating this zone on his voyage to Tahiti. Under heavy cloud cover and changing winds, he struggled to guide his crew. Exhausted, he eventually relaxed and felt a sudden warmth intuitively knowing the moon's position, which restored his confidence and direction. Manifesting intentions involves facing obstacles and self-doubt. Like Thompson, we must rely on deep intentions. Strategies include self-compassion, visualizing goals, and engaging in rituals to enter a state of flow. Starting with small, manageable goals builds confidence and positive emotions, making the process more sustainable. Achieving small goals strengthens resolve and provides wisdom for overcoming setbacks. It's important to enjoy each small success rather than rushing to the next goal. Improving interactions with others can aid in manifesting intentions. The nervous system responds to social cues and feeling safe activates the social engagement system, fostering positive connections. Listening and genuine compassion enhance these connections, making others more likely to support our goals. Aligning personal desires with a higher purpose can lead to greater success. Jim Carrey realized his comedy could free people from concern, aligning his work with a higher purpose. This alignment made him more successful and fulfilled. Writing a statement of intention can provide support during challenging times. This statement should reflect how your intention serves the larger fabric of life and can be shared to enlist support from others. Our brain can naturally scan for clues in our environment to help us manifest our intentions. The subconscious mind, like a bloodhound, hunts for opportunities once it identifies our goals. This leads to synchronicity, where meaningful coincidences appear. Paying attention to subtle hints and unexpected connections can guide us. Reflect on recent events that seemed odd or coincidental, like multiple people recommending the same book or recurring dreams. These might be signs from the subconscious, Amandine Roch's journey began with a chance invitation to a book fair, leading her to follow in the footsteps of adventurer Ella Maillard. At the book fair, Amandine met her friends Anne, who gave her Maillard's number. Although Maillard died before she could meet her, Amandine was inspired by a dream to retrace Maillard's travels. She received grants and traveled across Central Asia, India, and more, reaching Taliban-controlled Afghanistan. She persisted and eventually entered Kabul, thanks to help from officials who saw her name as a sign from Allah. In Farsi, Amin means peace, Jin means religion, and Rosh means joy. Aligning with our soul and paying attention to coincidences can lead to fulfilling our intentions. Reflect on life events and patterns, as they might hold clues to achieving goals. Sometimes persistence and hard work are necessary, but the subconscious can guide us through unexpected ways. Be open. Sometimes, while pursuing a vision, feeling stuck or confused can lead to new opportunities. Lynn Twist experienced this while working for The Hunger Project, addressing hunger and poverty in sub-Saharan Africa and the Indian subcontinent. Despite her busy schedule, she traveled to Guatemala and had a transformative experience with a shaman. This led her to have visions of indigenous people calling her to protect the Amazon rainforest. Lynn faced a dilemma as she had significant responsibilities at the Hunger Project. However, contracting malaria forced her to take a break. Her illness, though severe, gave her the time to reconsider her path and focus on the Amazon. Manifesting intentions involves letting go of specific outcomes and being open to new possibilities. 
Visualizing intentions helps guide actions, but the results depend on external factors. Feedback from the environment and people can reveal the next steps, even if they are unexpected. Manifesting is a continuous process of refining intentions and responding to feedback. Positive results reinforce the importance of the intention, while negative outcomes prompt reevaluation. Helping others can shift focus from self-criticism to a broader perspective, fostering personal growth. Aligning intentions with larger goals and being patient can lead to unexpected and fulfilling outcomes. Embracing the process and staying connected to an inner compass can reduce fear and anxiety, making the journey more rewarding. When others get involved, the number of moving parts increases, making outcomes more uncertain. Our ego can inflate our identity and lead us astray. Impatience and anxiety can cause self-criticism, while unmet expectations can lead to anger. Practicing self-forgiveness and maintaining balance helps us push forward and let go. Speaking to medical students at Tulane University, Dodi created a mnemonic of 10 values. Compassion, dignity, equanimity, forgiveness, gratitude, humility, integrity, justice, kindness, and love seat of Gekul. This alphabet of the heart sets the tone for the day and helps calm and reset intentions when frustrated. Gratitude shifts focus from what is lacking to what is working, producing changes in the brain that enhance well-being. Studies show that people who practice gratitude are happier and healthier. One study with college students found that writing gratitude letters improved mental well-being more than writing about negative experiences or receiving counseling. The benefits of gratitude practice were long-lasting and detectable in brain activity. Visualize someone who helped you feel gratitude and write them a letter. Reread it to deepen your gratitude. Share the letter with them or keep it. Write new gratitude letters regularly. Equanimity, the ability to maintain evenness of temperament, helps us pursue intentions without being swayed by outcomes. It's about understanding the transience of feelings, whether positive or negative. Equanimity allows for freedom from attachment and reduces suffering by blocking secondary reactions to negative events. Studies show that experienced meditators feel pain less intensely because they resist it less with their minds. The Japanese art of kintsugi, repairing broken pottery with gold, symbolizes embracing imperfections and seeing them as part of beauty. This practice teaches acceptance of life's inevitable breaks and repairs, highlighting resilience. Accepting imperfections invites others to connect and share their own struggles. Reflecting on goals and challenges reveals that both successes and failures are transitory. Maintaining equanimity helps navigate life's ups and downs fostering self-forgiveness and acceptance. Open your heart to self-love. Reflect on a time when you felt unconditional love and acceptance. Direct these feelings toward the tension you feel. Recognize your worth beyond outcomes. Let go of attachments to a particular outcome. Embrace equanimity. Install positive feelings. Notice if your sense of attachment has shifted or transformed. You might find a creative possibility you didn't notice before. A second chance. Driving home to Los Altos Hills, California, brings Dodie feelings of warmth, safety, and peace. His garden is full of life, with fruit trees and a soothing pond. The house, designed in a contemporary Asian style, offers tranquility. Dodie remarried and his family life is now rich, with in-laws helping the children with homework and everyone enjoying meals together. A cherished childhood photo and a painting by his